the best producers get somebody to live in their imagination of something that's not yet happened, but they can see what it's gonna specifically exactly look like when they don't come home or they don't wake up, that they think, man, this is a very big center pain. This is, this is, this is a central pain that I've got, right? And I've gotta find a painkiller. The painkiller is you getting the policy in place for your family. Does that make sense? All right, guys, hey, Paul McLean here. Welcome to the classroom edition. In fact, we got a classroom in here, and, and I actually passed out some, some sheets. So they got some, some homework stuff they're looking at. And I promise you the stuff that we're gonna go through today, guys, it's gonna bring you value. And my goal today is to bring you value. And I'm excited that you're on with us. And um, in fact, we're gonna talk about really the, the thing that I believe matters the most as far as building a skill that's gonna propel you to help more families. And that's your ability to paint a very clear picture in the home as far as why the client needs the protection, their situation, uncovering it. Once you uncover it, really spotlighting that, highlighting that where they can live in that picture that you've painted. And every second they live in that picture, the emotion that they're gonna feel of something that's not yet happened, but it seems so clear to them that it feels as if it is happening, that's gonna move them to deciding to protect their family. And that's really what this is, right? Sales is a, thought, a, a transfer of thoughts and ideas where you believe that it's your thought. And if I can go in and ask questions and paint a picture with the financial inventory in such a way that when I'm done and I ask these questions, you can see the pe picture with clarity. So clear where you almost feel like it's real. It's palpable, it's like tangible, like you feel like I'm in it. And then I can ask these great questions that get you to really think like, wow, this is taking place, this is happening. The reality is this, you don't know the difference between what you imagine and what you experience. The best producers get somebody to live in their imagination of something that's not yet happened, but they can see what it's gonna specifically exactly look like when they don't come home or they don't wake up, that they think, man, this is a very big, center pain this is this is this is a central pain that i've got right and i've got to find a painkiller the painkiller is you getting the policy in place for your family does that make sense too often though when i was just mediocre in the home i was passing out vitamins right you know what vitamin is like it makes you it's proactive it doesn't fix anything right away but it's like if you take this maybe in months to come your cholesterol won't be so high or whatever right it's a vitamin but what works and what makes a difference and what impacts people is when you give them a painkiller where they've got a, a pain, right? Their headache. I mean, think about it. If you've got a headache tray, you're not like, I'm going to take something that's going to prevent my headache down the road. You're like, no, no, dude, I need to get a painkiller. Like you start walking around, who's got an aspirin? Who's got a excedra migraine? Like I need something, right? Because you, you've got the pain. The best producers will paint a picture in such a way where the client understands that there is a pain and then they provide the painkiller with the solution and the different options that they can select. So we're gonna go through all that today. Now, where I wanna start real quick is this. <clears throat> I do believe that the biggest thing that will help everybody watching this today take it to the next level is understanding that you know everything you need to know to go out there and serve people, all right? What I mean is this. I think too often an agent that's just getting started, they start slow or they don't start at all, because they wanna know more. If you can understand that the way you know more is by serving more. The way you learn more is by serving more. So if I can go just sit with clients, as Sam said it great, like get through that first 100 appointments as fast as possible, what you're gonna realize is that all the things you thought you needed to know, you didn't really need to know, right? And the things that you needed to know were revealed by you going out there and serving and learning in the actual field, hands on, learning through experiences, right? And so let me just basically unmask that. If you think that this is gonna fix you, right, but you're making seven appointments a week, this is gonna help very little. What'll help the most is you increase the amount of families that you sit with, right? Or if you think that, man, well, I don't know what questions to ask, I, I gotta get this right. Take that weight off your shoulders and understand that all we're doing is meeting with families that have asked for help, that have a need, and if we can go in with our heart to be present with that family, understand that 
if, if, we under, if we know that the most important thing that they can ever get in place is protection, that one day something's going to happen. If we can almost, in our mind, imagine that this client, you're stepping in a week from now and they just lost that spouse. And you're stepping in and you're seeing what's going on in that home. If you can imagine, if you can get your emotions going about the fact that you're providing that check, you're walking in a week later with that check, and while they're going through everything, they know that they're not going to lose a house. They know that they can take care of their final expenses. They know that the income is going to be replaced. They know that the equity is going to be protected that's been established, and that's what they have to pass on. If you can step into that before you step into the home, right, that's going to allow you to take the weight off your shoulders of trying to know everything and have the right phraseology and, and verbiage. You're going to be able to let go of that weight that's unnecessary, and what you'll be able to cling on to is just present. You can be present with that person, knowing that they all have a need to protect their family. Why that protection is important might be slightly different. It comes in a couple flavors, not a ton. But if you can be present and ask those questions, you'll identify it. And once you identify and you can connect with the client, that's everything. Does that make sense? So this stuff will help, but let me just cast that weight off you because I know that I was carrying it. I was like, man, if I can know this and know that, it'll mess you up. Does that make sense? All right, a couple things is this. Um, the thing that will really help you before we get in the financial inventory is that the second thing is, is to intentionally build conviction on what you do, right? Now, how do you do that? Consume good stuff. So instead of consuming stuff that ain't gonna help you, right? If you've been new in this business or you've been here for a while, ask yourself, what's your weekly consumption, right? I did this with my mom the other day. I was like, mom, she's like, man, I got this pain and ache. I'm like, mom, what, what's your diet look like? She's like, I eat healthy, son. And I was like, well, break it down, mom. I'm like, what do you eat? And the funny thing is what she thought was healthy, it ain't healthy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mom, where? She's like, I have sandwiches for, for lunch. I'm like, you got diabetes. Like, what do you mean by sandwiches? She's like, you know, bread, the bread. And like, I mean, you can't be eating all this bread. She got all this bread she's eating and stuff. She's like, she thought it was healthy. But, but what she thought was, wasn't. And what I realized is the reason why she feels the way she feels is because she's consuming a bunch of junk. That makes sense? Just a bunch of stuff. She's like, I only have a couple cookies at night, but it's like, I got a sweet tooth, son. I'm like, I hear you, but you're going to die. Like, and we kind of like you, mom. Like, in the grandkids, we got like a, a ton of them for you to enjoy. Like, um, so, so, but that's the thing. Like, what are you consuming? What are you consuming? Does it build yourself up? So the thing I would tell you that would help out also at a significant rate when sitting with clients and, and being a top producer is consume good stuff. Man, podcasts, audios. Things that are going to empower you, get you to think bigger, you know, to, to allow you to remove excuses and justifications to take accountability. You know, get involved in around meetings and people that, that have a high level thought process like that, that hold themselves like that, that have the attributes that you're like, man, if I had those attributes, I would become a better version of who I am, right? Consume good stuff. Next thing is don't say stupid stuff. What's the stupid thing? Stupid thing is like, man, I just suck. I am no good on the phones. Now, that might be true, but you don't want to say it. That's a stupid thing because you're going to go out and make that come to pass. So I might be trying to help you and get better on the phones, but you keep telling everybody, I just suck. I just suck on the phones. Or, or these leads ain't any good. That's something that you can, that's really stupid to say. Because last time I checked, those are leads that you got to go work, right? The last thing I checked is that this person working the same kind of leads and they're doing very well. So, so what you want to do is check yourself. Are you consuming good stuff? And what are you saying? Consume good stuff, don't say stupid stuff. Make sense? All right, now, the thing that I wanna go through with you real quick and we'll get in the financial inventory is we passed out this accountability sheet, okay? The accountability sheet breaks down really just a way for you to interrogate your weekly reality, right? Because I think it's, it's difficult not to, to know what some, or some things that you should be tweaking, adjusting, what are some things that you can Im improve, right? So in regards to consuming good stuff, you might need to be consuming stuff on how to book appointments. You might be, be, you, know, you should maybe consume stuff on how to get better in virtual sales or how to dial in and get a better schedule. This is all training that's put in place for you. But this financial, this, this accountability card, what it's gonna do is gonna help give you a real true look on where you're at with everything, all right? So your schedule, it's green, yellow, or red. So green is like, dude, my schedule's locked on, locked in, I've got it, and I followed it. Red is like, dude, I don't even got a schedule. Red might be like, dude, I got a schedule, 
but I ain't following my schedule at all. Yellow's like, man, I have a schedule. I wasn't really following it, but I'm getting a little better. Okay, leads, same thing. Are you green, yellow, or red? Red's like, dude, I know I need to invest a thousand bucks in leads a week. I'm like four or 500 bucks. I'm red because I'm still doing the 500 week in, week out. Yellow's like, I know it's gotta be a thousand, but I went from five to 750, I'm getting there. I gotta get my mind right again, but I'll do it. Green's like you're doing what you need to be doing. So you wanna go through all this, additional policies, referrals, mortgage protection, filing expense, index universal life, annuities, door knocks, interviews, social media posts, social media DMs, like are you directly messaging people that, that are in different industries that you think would be good at this to introduce them to Family First Life, right? One level deeper is your team. Can you get one layer deeper each week? Can you have a conversation with somebody that they know and get one layer deeper every single week, right? Weekly podcast, are you plugging in those consistent? Are you red, yellow, green? Annual convention, and then coaching and feedback. Are you intentionally reaching out to people and saying, hey man, I'm struggling here in the home. Can you give me some feedback? Or man, I'm not, I'm not closing on the phones like I need to with telesales. What do you think I should be doing differently? And getting coaching and getting feedback so that way you have somebody looking at the game film, your game film for the week, giving you very pertinent feedback so you can go out there, take that, make the experience true learning and get better from that. Does that make sense? And see, this will help you take a quick pause. I'll sum it up with this and we'll get into the financial inventory. I started the meeting by saying, the, the, the podcast by saying this. If, if you could just go out there and start to do more, like you don't need to know more, just do more. See, too many people, they're not getting the results they want to get because they're thinking too much and doing too little, okay? Now, there's another group of people that are getting some good results, but they're not getting the great results because they're, they're doing so much and thinking so little. This will help you think at the end of the week, okay? It'll give you a quick mental pause where you could say, let me take a look at this. How can I tweak, what can I adjust, how do I get better? You guys understand, you with me? So, so that, that, that'll help out there. All right, let's jump into the financial inventory. So I'm gonna have this on the screen so you guys can see the one that I go through, right? Every, there's, there's a ton of them out there. Go through whatever one fits best for you. This is just the one that I use for a long time. Now, when we, when we go through the eight steps to a final expense in-home, right, you guys have heard kind of the steps. We got step one, get your mind right. Uh, step two is who you are, right? You're talking about you're a field underwriter, going through that. Step three is the reasons why you're there. And if you see here at the very top, it'll talk about the reasons why you're there. It says no burial insurance, income replacement, leave something behind to a loved one. So I put that on the financial inventory so it can serve as a reminder for you. So when you're sitting with the client, the first thing you want to kind of get into once you talk about, you know, really who you are is the three reasons why most people send back this request. The one thing I don't want to ever do is just say, hey, Sam, why did you fill this request out? You sent it to me. Yeah. You ask a stupid question, you get a stupid result. You get a stupid answer, right? <laughs> I realized that, especially with a 15 year old, you gotta be very good with the question to ask because they'll, they'll say something back stupid if it's a dumb question. So, so you gotta ask a good question if you want a good answer. A good question is, hey, most families, Sam, that fill this request out is for one of these three reasons, right? One, to make sure if they die that there's no final expense burden for the family. In fact, Sam, I don't know if you've seen GoFundMes um, or if you've seen the, the car wash, but I know that a lot of clients say, Paul, I would, I would, I've lived my whole life with dignity. I don't wanna die without it. And they just look at that like just a lack of preparation. And um, the last thing they want to have is a burden left when they die. They want to know that when they pass, that burial expenses are completely covered. Second reason, Sam, is a lot of clients, they live, um, in fact, probably almost every family I sit with, they're on a very tight budget, right? It's, it's very fixed. Which the good news with that is they know exactly what they can afford each month and what's disposable because it is mapped out. <laughs> like if it's like my mom, dude, she knows every nickel. She's like, is there a penny gone? Who took a penny? Like she knows what's going on. Like it's reconciled to a T. So the good news is you know what exactly is affordable for you, um, but they understand that if it's tight now, when somebody passes and that social security is now gone, it becomes a financial disarray. It's a financial disaster. And so what they wanna make sure of is that they have a plan in place that's gonna cover enough income to be replaced so the family can mourn, grieve, recover, and move forward in a healthy manner. The third thing is to make sure that if they can, do they wanna leave a legacy? They're like, Paul, if I pass tomorrow, you know, I got so much disposable cash each month. I'm not going to go buy a big old house or a better car. I'm kind of content with where I'm at. 
I just want to take what's disposable and leave as much as I can for my kids and my grandkids and family when I die. Now for you, Sam, which one of those three or, or two of the three or all three may, was kind of your trigger what made the most sense for you? They're all important to me. So, so you can get that. Now, if it's mortgage protection, I do it the same way but a little different. I'll say, Sam, most clients that fill this request back in, um, they want to make sure that if they don't come home tomorrow or somebody's driving down the road, texting and driving, and they run into you, and that's it. That's the last, that's the last second that their family is not going to be st stuck feeling this, this, this grief of what do I do, how do I get by, but also they want to make sure their family is in a financial position where they don't lose a house, they don't struggle, they're not in a bad spot financially. Is that kind of what you had in mind like most families? Yeah. So I'll ask you more pointed, to, you know, more pointed like that if it's mortgage protection. But that's still point three. It's the reason of why I send this request back in. And this is the same thing I would do over the phone or face to face. This is the why. This is what gets them to make the purchase. If you're like, Paul, my premium's way below the average, you suck at building a why. Because it's not, it's not a, a price thing. Typically, it's a value thing. If value exceeds price, people buy. Well, if your value is here, your price is going to be here. Your value is here, the price goes up, right? And so you want to build value in a high level. All right, so you go, through those, you go through the three main things. Now, once I've done that, you can see, and this is the, the same step process on the eight steps to final expense in-home is the three objectives. So the three objectives that I want to make sure are accomplished, Sam, is for one that you can afford it. Because Sam, at the end of the day, this is the most important thing for your family. You know, I've done this a long time and I've yet to see anything that makes such a massive impact. I've, I've yet to see anything that's guaranteed to happen as well. Like one day you're definitely not going to be here, man. And so the main thing is to make sure this is in place when that day comes. Because as important as this is, the only plan that makes sense and that brings value is the one that's here when you die. That's the one that's affordable. So the main objective I got is to make sure it's affordable for you. Second thing is to make sure that you qualify. Because if I go through all these things, like the stuff you see on TV that's like, you know, two, two and a half pennies for $500 million in protection, you qualify for day, today and you, you call and you realize you got to be a, a, a 17 year old female that's got the family history of triathlon runners and, you know, like it, it ain't real. Um, but we want to make sure you qualify. So for what we actually go through, you can actually get, right? And the third thing is that you understand it, Sam. There's been too often where somebody has a plan in place. They have this peace of mind. But the scariest thing is if it's falsified peace of mind. Because when they die, they thought they had full coverage, but maybe it was only accidental death because it was never explained to them. And when they go to fulfill that, that claim, and, they, and the only thing that they can hold on to that's given them peace is that my spouse is gone but I'm still going to be okay financially, thank God. And then they find out that that's not there. That's the worst thing you ever go through. So my, my job as a field underwriter is to make sure that you can understand it as well, Sam. Does that make sense? Now, now understand this. Every point, and I'm, I, this is a financial inventory. I'm already going through it, okay? Now, I'm not going through the questions yet, but th these are the top points to keep you on track. I, I'm build, everything I'm saying is centered around the why and value. Even when I say, see, some, some agents say, well, Sam, three objectives I got today is I want to make sure that you, you're affordable, you qualify, you can understand it. Does that make sense, Sam? Yeah, sounds good. And we go on. Well, well that didn't hold any value. Like me spending some time almost giving some scenarios and situations and hypotheticals and driving depth with it, that's getting them to purchase. The sale is being made already. Okay. Now, once I go through that, I go through the process. Now, Sam, process is pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to go through a couple different options. As a field underwriter, I understand that every situation is unique and different. And so my main objective is to make sure that we can find a plan that's going to be specific for you. What we're going to do is once we find that plan, we'll see if the carrier is going to qualify it and come back with a yes. If they do say no, uh, it's not a big deal. I work with all the carriers because I filled underwriting. I'm not a captive sales rep, so we can look at all the different options, and we'll go to the next option that might make the most sense for you that might say yes if this one says no. So does that make sense, Sam? Yeah. He says yes. Great. Now I'm going to go through those questions so I can kind of have a clear understanding of your situation, Sam. Um, are you and your spouse both working full time? Uh, no, it's just me. Just you? Okay. Well, I got a pen, so I'm going to have to pretend like I re I'm going to act like I remember all this. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean, you, you set me up for failure, Sam. You set me up for failure, dude. You're good. I, you got to... <laughs> I would have dove for it, bro, but then, you know. All right, so, so when you look at um, occupation, Sam, what are you doing for work? Uh, I, I wash semi-trucks. 
Okay, wash semi trucks. And then what's your, uh, and use, now if this is a telecell, the spouse is also on the phone. We're gonna pretend, what's your name? What is it? Emily. Emily, okay. So Emily, you're unofficially married to Sam for the purpose of this illustration, okay? I don't know if you like him, you don't like him, but you're married for just right now. So Emily, um, what is your occupation? Sales. Sales, okay, perfect. Um, Sam, what, what's your age? I'm 23. 23, Emily, what about you? 21. 21, okay, I like that. You went younger than Sam. Um, all right, as far as monthly income, Sam, what do you make each month? Eighteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. What about um, what about you, Emily? Four thousand. Four thousand. Okay. Perfect. Um, any medications, Sam, that you're taking? Um, I have high blood pressure. Okay. So I take I take. Uh, like or Tenol. Okay. Uh, by the way, it's not a bad idea to just look up the medications. Okay. Even have them printed out. <clears throat> it's just a way to give yourself some credibility. Because when you say stuff like that, like, so Sam, are you taking like lisinopril or tenol? He's like, oh, yeah, which makes you seem more reputable, which is what you're trying to do is to continue to build the case that you're the professional that's there to serve them, right? Um, diabetes, are you taking metformin, glipizide, glubride? Like, you, you want to know those medications. Um, all right, so high blood pressure, anything else, Sam? No. Any surgeries? No. Okay. Um, all right, so high blood pressure, Emily, anything you're taking? Nothing? Okay. Not die anytime soon. Yeah. That's, that's a good thing to believe. I, I'm with you on that, too. I'm, hey, I'm voting on you, not Sam. Sam's already got blood pressure. I don't know how he got it, but I would definitely vote for you outliving him. Um, Can you say that line again? Huh? Can you say that line you said earlier? I, I don't even remember what I said, bro. All right, so, so any cancer, heart attack, stroke, stents, diabetes, neuropathy, lupus, asthma, COPD, thyroid, anxiety, nothing like that for you guys? No hospitalizations? No. Okay. Um, perfect. Um, anything in place? Uh, what do you have in place that would offset the mortgage when you die? Like 401ks, IRAs, stocks, mutual funds, bonds? Uh, I don't have any of those. I have, a, I have a policy for work, though. Okay. What about you, Emily? No. Nothing? Okay. And you said you have work life insurance, Sam? Yeah. Okay. Um, anything private or just through the work? No, it's just through my job. Okay. What about for you, Emily? No. No? Okay. And so the work life insurance, Sam, just so you know the way that works, it's, it's not bad because usually they'll give it to you for free or it's very inexpensive. Is that kind of how they set it up for you? Yeah, it's, I think they just take it out of my check. Yeah, it's like pennies. It's yeah. really nothing, Watch, which is why everybody should elect for it. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a group plan, so it's there while you're working there. Um, I mean, we have had clients in the past where that's all they had. They get sick, get, um, they have cancer, they go to fight it. After 12 months, the company puts them inactive. They die of the cancer, and that policy pays nothing out. Um, but if you were to die, God forbid you're driving home tomorrow, that would pay out. But there's just situations where if you retire, it's no longer there with you. So we never count it as far as breaking down what's in place because this is the most important thing for the family. We don't want to have something that's got variables tied to it. But I don't suggest you cancel it. I suggest you keep it because it's probably free because of those reasons. Does that make sense, Sam? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, now, that's how I address it every time. I'm not going to kill it directly, but I'm indirectly letting them know, like, this is something we're not going to count, okay? Now, let's just say Sam says, I have, Emily says, I have $100,000 in life insurance that I took out private, right? Okay, perfect. I said, great, Emily. So, um, well, that'll help out quite a bit, because usually there's, there's 20 minutes of questions to kind of go through to figure out what their underwriting is going to be. Um, go ahead and grab that policy real quick, and, and if it takes you a minute to find it, no big deal. It's going to save us a ton of time because the underwriting will be kind of, they'll follow suit with whatever company qualified you. So if you could go grab that real quick. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna start going through the guidelines, okay? And that's how I handle that. So I make it seem like, for one, it's, it's her benefit. It's gonna save 15, 20 minutes, right? So I can see how they underwrite it. And, th and then I let her know like, hey, if you gotta go find it, no big deal. Most clients gotta go through the garage in the basement. They end up coming back with spider webs in their hair, but it's worth it, all right? Because I don't have to, go through all these series of questions with you guys because I can see what they did. And then she, she goes and finds it. Now I'm gonna ask questions like, now if it's over the phone, it's a telecell, it's what, what company you have in place? What do, you, do you see the death benefit? What's the death benefit show? Do you see what term it is? I'm gonna go through everything with them. Is it a 15, 20 year? Go to the next page. Do you see the table of premiums? Do you see at 20 year, what does it show? It's 140 bucks a month. Okay, great. On the 21st year, when it, when it renews, what does it go to? $400 a month. 
Okay, did you know that, Emily? No, I didn't. So now you're already building value. Does that make sense? And she's starting to see what she has in place, okay? So, so I go through all that. Um, perfect. Now, looking at your guys' situation, and this is on the form as well. Um, Emily, you, you've got, because every situation is different, your income is 4000 a month. Um, Sam, yours is 1800 Sam, you have some work-life insurance, nothing that, that you own or that we can count. Um, Emily, you have 100000 in private life. That, that's a 20-year plan that you have for the next 20 years. No money back on that. At the end, it just the company keeps it. Um, if you were to pass tomorrow, Emily, God forbid you're driving down the road and somebody runs into you, and Sam, you're faced with going through all of that, but then looking at the financial part of it, the income will go from a total of 5,800 a month, it would go down to 1,800 a month. Um, how would that impact your ability to, to pay the bills, the mortgage, the house? What would that look like? I didn't really think about it, but I wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to? Okay. Um, what, what would you have to do? Would you, would you have um, anybody that could help out? Would you have to move in with somebody? Do you know what? Yeah, I'd probably have to move in with somebody. Okay, and that's not, that's not what you want? No. Okay. Now, that, that's me. That's, I've painted the picture. Now, the questions gets them to live in that actual picture. Now, the one thing I did realize, because I almost assumed like this was like more of a final expense, is going through the mortgage. So I would ask to kind of back to just a little bit to hit that scenario, because they're very similar, is, is like, so Sam, your mortgage amount it shows that it's it's basically let's just say it's it's three hundred thousand or loan. What what's the uh, what is the house appraised for? If you guys got it appraised, what do you think it would appraise for? We just moved in, so it's like three hundred and ten. Three hundred ten, okay, three ten. Um, so you have about ten thousand in equity in house, right? Mm -hmm. Do you pay anything extra on top of the or plan or intend to pay anything on top of the mortgage each month? Uh, not right now, but eventually, yeah, maybe you, a couple. A month is what you'd probably try to do? Okay. So you try to put an extra couple hundred dollars a month. What's a payment right now a month? Is it like, what, 2200 20, Yeah, it's $2,200. $2,200, okay. And that's a 30-year loan? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Now, the reason why I ask, are you paying anything extra on top of the mortgage or do you intend to, is I can work off of somebody's intention. Okay. Now, once he says he intends to pay $200 a month, I can show more value and taking that $200 a month, and instead of putting on top of his mortgage, put into a plan that's going to protect his mortgage, still give him his money back and time to still pay the house off early. So, so I'm asking questions that's going to help me really build up more value for that client in their situation. You understand? So, so that's kind of the reason why I'm going to ask those questions. You could build off of intention. Even if they're not doing it, do you intend to put extra on top of your mortgage? Now, for the senior situations, if the client's like 60, and they say, I owe 200 grand, the house is worth 500, which is more applicable when somebody's 70 because they might have been living there for a long time, refinanced a couple of times, but there's equity. Um, what you got to realize is that's where you start to build the value in the equity protection. Okay. So then I could say, you know, you owe only 200 grand, the house is worth 500. So, so Sam, you guys have got 300,000 in equity, right? Yeah. Um, now, Sam, I could tell you, and this, this is where I go into a little bit of the why before I, I even kill them off. I say, Sam, um, I can tell you this much, man. I, I sit with a lot of families and every situation is different. You know, you guys are not 30 years old with five kids running around the house like I am, where if I go, don't come home tomorrow, I got college. They got, they all got to eat still. My wife probably still will live for another 70 years cause she's 30. Like, like it's just different. And we don't have the equity. Like for you guys, what every client does in your situation, they're just looking for a plan that's going to make the payments long enough. So you can figure out the next best move and make sure that the equity is not going to be lost. Because most people don't, don't realize this, and this happens all the time. Somebody dies, 90 days goes by, right? The client's going through mourning. They can't even get out of bed. I mean, they've, the, the person they've lived their life with for the last 30 years is no longer here. Every bit of their day reminds them of that person. Because every bit of their day involved that person. They don't, they're not thinking about stuff like that. On the 90th day, the house gets foreclosed because the lender don't care. And, and some banker sells it off from underneath them, 
right? And maybe the house was not even in, in the shape to sell it. They needed to put money into it, whatever it is. And that 300000 in equity is gone to a stranger. It's gone to the bank. In fact, I had a client, Sam, last week said, Paul, if that happened, I would roll over my grave and I'd haunt him. You know? And I think he was serious. Like he would intentionally try to figure out how you could do that. But, but like you, it's almost like you put in $2,200 a month every month to a savings account. When you die, somebody else gets it, not your spouse. And so at your age, guys, what everybody is looking to do is just protect that equity. So Sam, if you pass, Emily, you might decide to sell the house, maybe downsize or whatever, or whatever option you want to do, but at least you don't want to lose that 300000 So most clients are looking for just a plan that covers it for a year, two years, gives them able to make the payments long enough, maybe fix it up, sell the house and protect the equity. Do you guys see how that makes financial sense? Yeah. Now, now I've already done that before I go into what I already went into, which is Sam, if you pass or Emily passes, it drops by this income. Does that make sense? That's the only difference between mortgage protection and the final expense part of it is I'll do more of the mortgage, what you have in place, the equity. And then if it's a big equity situation, then I'm going to hit the, the just having enough to cover one or two years of mortgage payments. So as I get into the, the options, they're not like, oh, I thought I was going to get the whole mortgage paid for. I get them already buying into the thought process of equity conservation because I know if Sam's 77 years old, he's not going to want to pay $7,000 a month for a plan that covers $500,000. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to start to, to lay that seed and plant that, plant that there. All right, so now going back, I've already killed off em Emily. Ask Sam what it looks like. Now I'm going to ask Sam. So Sam, if, if God forbid you don't come home tomorrow or God forbid... You know, a lot of times if there's 70, something I'll say, if you don't wake up tomorrow, you know, I'll say something like that. But if you don't come home tomorrow and you're driving down the road, and again, I'm giving specifics and clarity. Everything you add to it, it makes it more real. Don't be just vague. You, the more specificity you give it, the more that picture becomes alive. The more emotion that picture evokes. And emotion leads to motion, which is in purchasing the plan, protecting our family. So, Sam, if you're driving down the road tomorrow, God forbid, and some 16-year-old runs into you and you don't see him, um, Emma, your income will go from 5,800 to 4,000. Would that make it more difficult to take care of everything yeah. in the mortgage? Because it's almost like you'd be losing what your mortgage payment is each month, right? Okay, got it. I, hey, listen, I understand 100%. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go through the different options. Um, my goal is to really find a plan that's going to best fit for you. So you can have that peace of mind. And the good news is because of your guys' age, you can set it up where it's actually like, a, like a, an asset or works for you as a savings account, so to speak, where it's not just a, a typical expense. And what I mean by that is this. You know, like you said, in most clients that I see what they're doing this, the, you know, you put two, three dollars a month on top of your mortgage, right? The goal is to, to save the interest on the back end, pay it off early. Yeah. Well, what, what we can do is what everybody does in your situation is you do like a 20-year plan if you pass away, it pays off the mortgage for each other, so there's no financial hardship like, like will take place right now without it. But if nothing happens, which is what we're hoping for, after 20 years, you get 100% of that money back like a savings account. So everything you put in, you get it back. You can pay the house off early. The reason why that's so much more advantageous is, Sam, a lot of clients that are putting the extra 200 bucks a month on their mortgage, what they don't realize is if they died in seven years and they put all that extra money to create that extra equity. So they put an extra 200 bucks, 2,400 bucks for seven years. They put in an extra like 17, $18,000. When they pass, if the spouse can't make the payments and they don't have the right income to debt ratio, they can't refinance the house to get the mortgage out. What if the economy is in a tougher situation where they can't sell the house in 90 days and all that equity is actually gone? So they were putting money in a spot that wasn't even accessible. Where this, it's going to pay the house off if you were to die in the next 20 years. But if you don't, you get it back tax-free. You can take that, pay the house off early, save your money on the interest on the back end. Or you could simply use that to step into retirement and create a better financial blueprint as you go into retirement. The money goes back to you directly. Do you guys see how that makes a lot more sense? Yeah. So I'll go through the different options. Now, the mortgage is, is 300000 We could do up to 400000 right? With the HMS, uh, was it HMS 100? CBO? CBO 100. So, so you go up to 400,000, right, in protection. So I could even say, we'll go up to 400,000. And, and the goal is we could do 300, we could do 200. This is level, even though the mortgage goes down. 
so it'll still pay out. Now, the, and now when I package the options, I would do something like this. So if I show 400,000 as the number one option, okay, I'm gonna say to pay off the mortgage plus give like, like a year of income replacement and cover a final expenses. So it's gonna do all in one and still every dollar you're putting into is like a savings because you get it back at the end. So to cover your mortgage, leave income replacement and cover your final expenses, option one. That would be $220 a month savings for each one of you. So 220 and then 220, so total it would be 440. And then I, I do the math as far as what the savings would be. Anybody already got that math? No, times 12. So that's $105,600 at the end, right? So I'm gonna write the 105,000 bigger, the monthly savings sl smaller, because I'm gonna say, guys, the odds are you're, you're gonna be alive in 20 years. That's why a lot of the term policies, they'll say, we'll give you a quadrillion dollars in protection for 20 years for 10 bucks or whatever they do, it's because they know that you're probably gonna still be alive in 20 years, they keep the premium. Here, it's 100% money back, tax-free at the end of the plan. Option two, let's just say it's 300,000. Now it's $180 a month, right? For, and let's just pretend their age is exactly the same to keep it easy. I don't wanna get into the weeds with you guys. So, so 180 times two times 12 times 20, they get back 86,000. 400 and then option two maybe i say it's 200,000 so it's not the full mortgage but it's pretty close and let's just say that's 130 a month so it's 260 times 12 times 20 it's back you get back 10,000 that ain't right let me see 260 times 12 times 20 it's 62,400 all right, so now I got those options written down. My close is this. It's, it's Todd, listen, we can't make a decision today because we don't know if you're gonna qualify. But if you were to qualify, which one of these options based off of the protection, the money coming back, and the monthly savings would make the most sense for you? Option one. Option one, perfect. Now, we can't decide if it's gonna qualify, but we'll give this one a shot and kind of go from there. Grab, grab your driver's license for me. Does that make sense? And you give them a, a call to action. And so it's no different if this is, if this is final expense, I would do the same thing, right? If, if it's a final expense appointment, I'd show 20,000 maybe, I'd show, or if, if the most I can get based off your health and age, maybe it's 30,000, 20,000, and 10,000. And I'm not gonna talk about what it is, I'm gonna talk about what it does. So if I know that you're both on social security, because I found out in the financial inventory, and I found out that if you die, it's gonna go from you know, a total income of three grand to 1,200, I'm gonna say, if that happens, what does that look like for you guys? Well, it's gonna to be tough, I don't know how. Same thing, I ask the questions, let them go deep in the emotion, and then when I show the options, it's this one will cover your final expenses plus one to two years of income replacement so you don't have to worry about, oh my God, what do I do? You have time to more and grieve recover. Option two is this, option three is this. You break down what it does, and then the last question is, we can't make a decision today because we don't know if it'll qualify, but if it were to qualify, which one of these would make the most sense, okay? Last thing is this. If they have money in a 401k, IRA, mutual funds, I notate it then, once the sale's done, okay? Once the sale's done, you don't need to know how to sell an annuity, nothing like that. Once the sale is done, you go back and say, hey, Todd, by the way, the 200,000 that you've got in the, in the 401k, um, how much of that, man, could you afford to lose? None of it. None of it, okay. Um, that's what most clients feel like, especially in, at your age and situation. Um, if we could show you a plan that would minimize, that would negate all losses, it would negate all fees and give you still good potential growth, would that be something you'd be interested in? Possibly. Okay, perfect. Well, listen, man, I don't have time now. I'll put together some options. I'll have some time next week about the same time. Is, is the same time next week good for you, 6 o'clock? Uh, 7 works better. Okay, perfect. I'll put it down at 7.30 because I already have it at 7. Give me a window between 7 and 8, and I'll make sure to give you a call and go through those options for you that I think will really serve you and be more of what you're looking for. And then you just book a time to go back. In the meantime, you can get on with advanced market sales and put together a solution for that issue or that situation. Same thing with, with IULs. If they're like, I'm putting 500 bucks more on top of my 401k than they're matching. If they're like, I'm putting 1,000 bucks in a savings. 
These are all opportunities where you're finding premium that you can come around, show them better value and what you can place it in. And in doing that, obviously you get paid and they get helped. It's a win-win. Does that make sense, guys? So I hope this helps with the financial inventory. Um, guys, this is something that the best way you can get better at it is to go sit with a lot of clients and go through it with them. And as you go through with them, you know, that little uncertainty, uncomfortability of like, man, when I ask that question, like, Bob, if you don't come home tomorrow, that income goes to here. And then it's, I get it. But anything good that's happening, all the growth is going to come from uncomfortability. Your ability to get the client uncomfortable, your ability to get comfortable being uncomfortable going through all this and asking good pointed questions will be your ability to go out there and serve more families. So guys, I hope this served you well. Guys, make it a big week. Be strong, stay steadfast, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.